In a world dominated by concrete and steel, conventional farming methods are no longer viable at scale to feed the overpopulated cities. More efficient and automated methods are needed to feed the masses. Today, we are looking at some of these methods and how you can bring agriculture into the cyber age in your cities. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another one of these videos, finally! And today we are talking about something that does not get enough love in the sci-fi space and that is farming. And first up today, we're kicking things off with a little bit of hydroponics. We uh, briefly covered that in the lab video, but we're going to extend on that today. Specifically, I'm talking about vertical farming. In the future, water is going to be a very scarce resource and you want extra efficiency and all of that. Vertical farming can reduce water usage up to about 90% and it can increase the efficiency per area by up to like 10 times with double grow speeds and all of that. So hydroponics is definitely the way of the future. And here we have a couple of examples where the water would be coming down the pipes and being fed in through all the plants. We also have a couple of drones here, just AI drones just flying around, catching our things and uh, picking our leaves and all that sort of stuff. We have another vertical farm at the back here using a more like dripping method, as you can see. And then we also have this one here with the grow lights hanging off of the sides. And yeah, these are just a couple of good examples. But there's also shelf-based uh, vertical farming. So this one, obviously, you would have your shelves uniform one type. But I just gave you a couple of ideas. There's moss carpets and uh, these things that I forget what they're called. And the hanging roots and pickles and leaves and all kinds of stuff that you could potentially put on your shelves but again like i said you would want to keep them to a more uniform situation like this and just imagine that these things can go into giant facilities underground bunkers they can fill up all of the levels of a skyscraper this could go into a spare bedroom they can go into a container anything and everything put it onto someone's balcony if you want there's another version of it here that has some of the uh the the more like uh fluorescent purple lights again using some of the pots to have like uh water systems running through the bottom of it there's tons of ways that you could do vertical farming just imagine stacking these in massive rows maybe even making them taller that is vertical farming next up we have what i call the aquatic farming category first off most fish and things like that would probably get grown in facilities in vats like these ones here we have some cod and at the back here we have some salmon we also have two different types of lids so like a, a slightly a cheaper version and then something that's a bit more mechanized with some glass and it makes it look real nice for the most part i would imagine that most fish proteins and things like that would be processed in in these giant processing plants for for fish um farming methods of this nature rather than you know actually fishing because probably the oceans have been overfish you know how capitalism works it it's bad everything gets used up and so this is probably the best way to get fish bonus points for hooking these ones up with some pipage to go through your hydroponics setups turning them into aquaponics setups which will take your double grow time and probably double that even more you know because nothing is better for your plants than that sweet sweet nutritious fish poop water and then every cyberpunk setting is, you know, there's a lot of Asian influence, right? And, and what is Asian influence if not sushi and nori and seaweed and things like that? You're probably going to have loads of facilities that are growing kelp and seaweed and things like that. In this case, yeah, again, just a facility for growing these things rather than getting them out of the ocean, which uh, is probably not that viable anymore and in this case i just kind of for, for funsies just kind of set it up to be an actual usable farm because why not next up we have what i like to refer to as the downtrodden methods the uh the low tech low life methods and one of that would be just growing some mushrooms in your basement i mean giant facilities for mushroom growing and fungus growing and moss and algae growing would also be viable but just a very rudimentary example but just you know 
chuck some mushrooms in your basement. They're super low tech, they grow pretty easy, they're very cheap to grow. That would definitely work. But then also, and this is not a full building, imagine that these are just the rooftop. And on the rooftop, why not? Yeah, just chuck some gardens in there. Imagine for a second, if you will, that there's a very downtrodden part of town where, you know, the people are not very well off, probably can't afford the best of food. Um, but then, ironically, uh, this is probably better than most of the things that you would get in the supermarket anyway. But some old codger decided instead of spending his retirement years just uh, sitting in front of the TV doing not much else, he was going to decide to build a rooftop garden and supply some extra food for his community. Even though these people are living in dire circumstances, it doesn't mean that there isn't some sort of sense of community, right? So these people could very easily just make some rooftop gardens and supplement, for the most part, their food expenses by growing a little bit of their own. Now that we got some of the urban methods out of the way, let's move back to a little bit of legacy agriculture here and uh, look at some heavy machinery and some actual field-based agriculture. First up here, with the help of our old friend, Captain Jack, I bring you the cyberpunkificated cotton harvester with Colin, the, uh, the driver, the automa automaton driver, of this here cotton harvester. You can imagine that regardless of what the resource situation in your cyberpunk world is, that the elites and those with money are probably still gonna, you know, occasionally wanna get a cotton t-shirt. It's not like cotton production is going to completely be halted for synthetic materials and the likes. It's interesting to think of it as, you know, just automating this process as much as possible to the point where it is as efficient as it can possibly be but there's certain things that are probably still better to just do in a field and I will admit that when it comes to world building there's absolutely no reason to just make some of these sorts of farms outside your city limit definitely worth expanding your cyberpunk world to beyond your city limits and this is a fantastic way to just fill up swaths of land by adding some legacy agriculture so we have the cotton harvester here, and I've given you guys a bit of a flyby, but as usual, there will be a world download link in the description. So, uh, you know, go check it out for yourself and see what it's all about. And then the next one we have here is an autonomous tractor. And in this case, the tractor is pulling a plow. So you can see the, uh, the tire marks and then, you know, the plowed area here. And yeah, this is just a completely autonomous tractor that actually exists in the real world. You guys can go and look it up. The name of it is the Case IH Tractor. It's a really cool tractor and it's just another example of not needing human input. This is completely autonomous and it could just pull the plow for days. It does still run on a diesel engine, but you know, um, you could easily replace that with some extra solar panels or something like that and pretend like they've passed that sort of requirement. Then next up, we have a big old combine harvester and it's being powered by Conrad, Colin's brother. So yeah, just again, a combine harvester that's been automated. Uh, most of them, like, you can't turn this into a thing that just has a little driver module or anything like that because it does still need all of the rest of this for processing you got like the the husks and things here and then everything else gets spewed out back and all of that sort of stuff you can't really replace the entire machine with just an autonomous little driver module here but you could still automate the driving part and end up with something that looks a little bit like this custom heads can be replaced for certain other blocks a little bit of custom head edge is always uh, fun to play around with if you have the ability to do so the neon signs is definitely a good addition to make sure that you get like some extra levels of detail and a really cool banner here at the back and then finally we get around to drones and i have here two of my own designs uh first we have a very chunky boy drone over here with four rotors and i've kind of built it to 
distinctly different sides. This side here, the wheels are down for landing and the sprayers are retracted so that it's in landing mode. And then on this side, I kind of just showed like the flying mode, right? So the sprayers are extended and the wheels have been turned up so that this thing can fly across the fields and spray its lovely, lovely chemical fertilizers and bug sprays and all that sort of stuff. We have some heads here for port and starboard lights uh, because most flying things still require those and a couple of caution signs, the lights out the front and a little uh, drone eye. But again, most of those things can be replaced with vanilla blocks. It's just, uh, it's just nice to see all of the details, right? And uh, I've been using some hopper minecarts up here to for, for like the center bit of the rotors because I thought that they looked pretty cool like that. And then the final one we have here is a repurposed drone that we used for, for our airport video, actually. And I've just repurposed it into an actual autonomous crop duster or maybe not necessarily autonomous, but definitely remote use, right? You can just have someone sitting in a control room somewhere and just flying this thing across all of the uh, the crops and dusting them with all of the f uh, pesticides and things like that to ensure that they get you know maximum yield and that ladies and gentlemen is as they say that thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video or found any of it helpful please do leave me a like it helps out a ton subscribe if you haven't already and for all of your livestock farming needs i'd refer you to the lab video on screen right now because you know vat grown proteins and whatnot bye